You say Geralt? Geralt who? A fucking Rivia. So it's been all over the news, at least in uh, in the fandom. There's going to be a new Witcher game. There's there's a lot of information already verified through multiple sources. So I would want to go through that. For most people that know, it did resemble a Lynx and Robert Malinowski, the global communications director of CD Projekt Red, confirmed to Eurogamer that it is in fact a Lynx. He said, like, a, some mystery should not be a mystery. So I think it's good that we have that as a starting point. And Radek, um, who was the global PR director, he said that what we have not announced today, The Witcher 4. And because of the link to the Unreal Engine 5 with Epic Games, a lot of people were worried that it's going to be an Epic exclusive. They said a game exclusive to one storefront has also not been announced. That is not what we're talking about here. I think that they're also not going for that. I think they're going to do it on GOG as well. And it's going to be available on, on all platforms. Either way, so with that out the way, we have a new Witcher game that has been announced. How do you feel about it? And second of all, what do you think it's not going to be? Or what do you hope it's not going to be? So here's my prediction. It's going to be called The Witcher Origins. Because that's the most original title one can come up with. I mean, it has to be because it has origin, which is part of the word original. I mean, exactly. Duh. Exactly. I'm happy that we think alike in so many ways. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's telepathy. Um, <laughs> yes. But no, you mentioned it's the school of the... Well, it's, it's not the school of the... Uh, but it's uh, the, the thing we've seen is a lynx. I did, it, 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 ha it has to be a school because there's a medallion. So I would only assume that it's linked to a school, no? It's... Probably not the school of the lynx, but school of the cat. And Siri is part of the school of the cat. And that's one thing I'm hoping it will not be. Mm, I would even say that no, that's not true. Because if you look at the medallion of the school of the cat, which you can see on Siri, it doesn't look the same. I've, I've looked at the shape and I've even did a Photoshop overlapping them. It's actually not the school of the cat uh, symbol, which is very different. Has a different snout, has different ears. So, um, but it what what it is, it, it could be a continuation or even a combination of the school of the cat and the school of the wolf. So it could have some Siri elements in there. Yeah, well, let's hope that's true because that's one thing I hope it will not be is Siri. Yeah. And Siri always bothered me becoming a witcher mm -hmm. because she's the daughter of a queen. Uh, she is a queen or a princess and she will become a queen. And to me, that makes absolutely no sense. I, I guess you could make some sense of it by the, by the law of surprise or something. But it's to me, it just really doesn't make sense that a queen or a princess has to do these, these errant types of quests. Just, just to make it clear, I, I think the Witcher is is a perfect setup for this type of game because you're you're just a mercenary and and you you come into a into a village, you go to this message board and you you see this assignment. Someone needs to to fetch my pen. I lost it in the wood. Yeah, and I think even for series uh, defense, I think that in the main Witcher saga, which I think is also that's why it's not going to be the Witcher four because that trilogy is done. It m made a little bit of sense because that empire was disbanded and she she. F she fleed from that and she didn't want to take on the mantle of queen she wanted to become a witcher so i can only assume that this is more of a story of like making your own destiny instead of following what's what path has been laid in front i like that element but i do 100 percent agree i would also not want siri because i think that siri is first of all also too overpowered how are you still gonna have that path of growth while we've already experienced that path of growth so I would also agree that for that reason alone already, I wouldn't want to have Siri in the game as the main character. So you, you've, you've got some ideas for, the, for what it could be. So you mentioned the conjunction of spheres. No, well, let me back up to what the links means. I, I, I care a lot about symbolism and especially with animals, they're usually brought into games because animals have a lot of symbolism. I think that this has also been a thing in the whole Witcher scene is that I think that there's a lot of symbolism behind the wolf. The wolf is usually a very loyal animal and it's, it's also something that is it's brought a lot of foresight. This brings something to the, the element of who Geralt is. The history behind the lynx is that in the first Egyptian dynasty, they've had like a situation where the land flourished and it was the best moment for Egyptian culture. 
And from when we look back at history, one of the first parts of Egyptian mythology that was recovered from their arts and monuments, there was a monument for the goddess of Mephtet, who was a fierce feline goddess. And she was depicted as a lynx in a very similar way as that you can find the thing in the snow. So the lynx goes back as a representation of the first dynasty, the possible best uh, moment. Now this sounds to me as the golden ages of the Witcher. And I think that we could go back to a time where the Witchers have just begun or are in their best time. Now there's two moments that I can think of that would be very relevant to this. And this is why I think the school of the lynx, we could go back to a school that is not yet mentioned because it wasn't, we don't know much about that time. And we could go back to, for instance, the conjunction of the spheres, which to explain is the moment where the, the multiple spheres would join together and the Nordlings, there's also the first landing where the Nordlings would come to the land of the elf and basically do what the Europeans did to the natives. And if I may interrupt you, what are the spheres? Are these magical orbs or what? The spheres are multiple realities. And this is also the moment where the sphere of the Nordlings, the sphere of the elves, the sphere of the monsters and elements of magic, these all came together. The Nordlings would go to the land of the elves because their previous land was destroyed. Monsters would all of a sudden enter the land of the elves as well. And all of a sudden there was this exploration of magic. And thus the Nordlings would have their own mages and wizards. And from there on we would also, because there were more monsters, there was a need to find people that could kill these monsters. And that is where the origins of the witchers lie. Which for me, seeing the origins of the witcher, or, or even going a little bit later than that, and, and seeing the aftermath of that and seeing their golden ages, it would make it a very exciting time to follow. I don't necessarily need Gerald. I'm not a big fan of fan service, so I wouldn't per se want to have a big cameo of him. I would like to see more lore about the origins and how we got to something like a Kara Morgan and, and seeing the first moments where the beginning foundation of the Witchers were built up and how they created a Witcher for the first time. Those kind of things would be interesting. What do you think about that idea, by the way? Yeah, uh, going back to the <laughs> how it began. Yeah, sounds, sounds like a cool idea. It would be even cool to see you build up, for example, Kara Morgan. Yeah, you could form your own kind of place where people belong, where you build your own family, which wouldn't have to be a Kara Morgan, but something, you know, a place for that school. Yeah, and you mentioned these spheres are sort of realms, and it, it really reminds me of the Yggdrasil of the Norse mythology. Yes, which is also in God of War, by the way. Yeah, but also in Norse mythology. But yeah, if, if you could do it like God of War and, and travel between realms, that might be cool. That could even be an element that they could build into the lore. Maybe that is something I, I, I have to be honest that I've researched a lot, but not to that extent. So uh. no, I'm, I'm just I'm just giving ideas what I think would be would be cool. Siri, Siri is doing this in spoilers in the end of The Witcher 3. She's mm -hmm. going between multiple realms. I don't know if those are multiple spheres. Uh, as far as I know, not. But yeah, but realm realm traveling would be <laughs> would be great in my opinion. Definitely. I think that, that that concept in itself could be explored further and even, I mean, if there's something like Siri, there has to be another iteration in the past as well. And we don't need Siri, but we could, we could find out more about the powers mm -hmm. that Siri controls. We could find out more about, for instance, the different types of magic. And I mean, if we're going back to a moment where magic is in its first moments, in its foundation, the exploration and more explanation of what makes every type of magic different could be very interesting because it doesn't need to be only focused on the witchers. I mean, one thing that I loved in The Witcher 3 is the element of how do witchers and witches, how do these separate types of classes work together because it becomes a social element. And I think that that for world building is, is a beautiful thing to, to see. Another thing that uh, I would want to mention is that it's it's not it's not a weird thing for CD Projekt Red to invent a new school because in the books you only had the cat, the wolf, and the griffin, and CD Projekt Red invented the school of the viper, the bear, the manticore, and the crane. So for them to invent something new, it's not a bad thing. 
But what I would want to say is that if they're going away from Geralt and if they're they're leaning so much on creating a story of their own, I do think that they, if you look at Elden Ring and bringing in George R. R. Martin, or if you look at even Game of Thrones and the last two seasons that didn't have the books to lean on, I think a good lesson from both these things, one that went very well and the other one that went horribly wrong, is that I would bring back Andre Sapowski to help write out the, the origins and lore and everything that happened around that time to to help and and to mm-hmm. really collaborate this time because i know that this has been a bit of a problem with at least sapowski that he felt like they went a little bit off the path with their stories he also felt like it didn't, doesn't have anything to do with my books and i would like for them to reach out at least but i do think that there is a big benefit of of bringing him into the fold and letting him explore and develop this lore for for the origins of the witcher and the conjunction of the sphere and there's one other thing that I think could be a good basis for perhaps a story. There's this thing called the um, the Aleron's Uprise, which is Aleron is this elf. The idea behind this is that Aleron's Uprising is the moment where the elves are basically sick of it, their land being taken and everything. We could also work around a story with racial disputes where we would see something roughly a century after the first witches were created so we are talking about the golden age still where we can see issues between the elves and mankind because the the witch hunt that you saw in the witcher 3 uh where they're burning witches and everything mm-hmm. those kind of elements i already liked and i also like the elements where they, they hint at the horrible history between the elves and northling but yeah for the rest I, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to more witchers stories so yeah that's that's kind of our uh our take on this uh this incredible news looking forward to it hope it doesn't take too long for them to do, actually develop this and for this game I, I think about four or five years i hope so as well that would be perfect and there's there's enough time for people to get excited but there's not enough time for people to build up so many ideas that mm-hmm. they get disappointed now these are our thoughts of course, we would love to continue this discussion with you in the comments. So if you have a great idea for this new saga in the Witcher franchise, please let us know. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking it and perhaps even subscribing to our channel. This will help us understand what people like and create better content for you as a listener. And if you like The Witcher or fantasy in general, you can check out my latest short story on talesofasses.com. You can find the link in the description. This was From a Rise Perspective and see you in the next one.